thanks loads to Kate Pimbrays and her team of dozens. Let's say thank you. So let's get started. The Lord be with you. changed. How about that? No, wait, I, I, want, I want this one first. So, oops, darn it. So, now the Memorial Garden is in here. The Children's Center I was discussing is here, and then we have two more education buildings. Here's the Music Center, the bookstore. Notice the expansion of the parking lot. Mockingbird Lane. But for this morning's conversation, much more significant than that is we're no longer surrounded by the desert. We're becoming surrounded by a neighborhood. Monumental changes in our life together. Hundreds of new neighbors and hundreds more walking the beautiful path next to us. So <coughs> TriStar not only decided to make, to, well, actually the, they had to keep the wash, but they decided to landscape it. And in this picture, all the landscaping isn't there. And of course, today it's not green. But most of the time, it'll be green. And notice they're landscaping right along here and, and here and, and all of this. And by the way, here is a, a, a security gate that has access into all of this part of the development. This pathway comes down here. And then right, right along in this area, it crosses a bridge and opens up into all of this housing development as well as the resort restaurants and shops, and then you can also go this way to Indian Bend. But, th but they've continued to landscape this beautifully, and as I said in my sermon, I trust most of you here will have heard the sermon, it is remarkable, and I love what Bruce Williams says, it is a, well, he didn't say remarkable, he said, anyway, remarkable opportunity that this pathway has been put here. And it affords us a spectacular opportunity to welcome people onto our ground. So
So as we begin this, and uh, in just a few minutes, David Getz will come and tell you about how, um, when I say this, I mean as we begin to, I'm so sorry, as we begin to imagine how we would beautify our boundary, and, and the front as well, David Getz will come and tell you about that. As we begin that, and as we look further into <coughs> our facilities, we, we came to realize that much of our landscaping needed refreshing and upgrading, and then especially our formation buildings. These are the three formation buildings right up here now, looking from the, from the east side, that they just need significant upgrading. And so the project began to grow on us, and, and you'll hear more about that from David Getz and from Tim Newman and a bit from our senior warden. So, because I said so much in my sermon, I'm not going to do it now. What I want to say is that the campaign begins today, and it continues until March 29th. And during that period of time, we're going to have some tours scheduled, I think a half a dozen or so times, where you can take a tour and see the, what we're thinking about in the landscaping areas and in the buildings. We're also going to have smaller gatherings of maybe 20 to 30 people, where we can have a more of a conversational tone and ask more questions and perhaps better get a better feel and a sense for what we're doing. Additionally, we have an information table on the patio every Sunday. You can drop by there, and that's where you can sign up for the tours or the smaller gatherings and get all, any question that you have. There'll be people there able to at least attempt to answer your questions. We also have a page on our website, a whole section dedicated to the project. That'll have questions and answers on it, and as you all ask questions that we didn't think of, we'll be adding them to the Q&A section on the website, and it'll just, it'll just keep growing as, as we, as the community, will continue to learn and understand and, and form one another of, of what our project is. Then on March the 29th is when we'll have what we're calling Commitment Sunday or In Gathering Sunday, in which we're inviting people to tell us what their commitment is. As I said in the sermon, or in the announcement, tomorrow we'll mail a magazine to you. It's a beautiful 16-page magazine put together by our communications director. And that will give you a lot of data about the, uh, the major areas that the project is working on. And then probably two or three weeks from now, you'll receive a letter and a place card in the mail. And, uh, uh, and uh, John Gibbons will at the Catholic campaigns here will talk more with you about how you can respond to that place card. All right, we good? So, Jeff, you want to come and help us? Thank you. You bet. Well, good afternoon. This is a significantly more challenging crowd for me uh, than the 9 o'clock service because M many of my fellow choir members are here, and <laughs> I can tell you they, they, they're, they're a really tough group, right? <laughs> yeah. Listen, it's my pleasure to introduce the teams that have been uh, developing this plan and to tell you a little bit about that formation process. Uh, and so this slide shows uh, both for the, the, the landscape and grounds effort uh, that it was headed up by David Goetz, um, and supported by Ken Ellison, Joanne Berg, William Harris, uh, Francis rather, Jay Harris, Todd Harold, Tom Hott, Pat Ryle, John Underwood, and Jack Wilson. And I suspect that there were probably another dozen or more folks that contributed as well. Um, that group uh, has been in place for over three years. Uh, we're actually into the fourth year that they've been working on that. And, and the genesis for that was as soon as it was public and formalized that Ritz was gonna build that development and finally it was, it was, gonna, it was, it was gonna happen, our, our rector had the, the, force, the forethought to have David, who was senior warden at the time, form a committee and start thinking about what are we gonna do? How are we gonna respond to this? And so they've been at it for a long time. Um, and then about a year ago, we had a catharsis that was, wait a minute, if we're, if we're going to make some investments in the campus, 
we have some serious needs in our buildings, particularly in our education buildings and in Hutton Hall. And we can't just welcome people from the outside. We've got to welcome them when they're here as well. And we've got to tend to those important priorities. So we formed a buildings committee for the refresh, co-chaired by Melinda Gulick and Jim Newman, supported by my lovely wife, Pam Bell, Kate Fimbris, Manny Fimbris, Gary Hoover, Rachel Maloney, Hank Parker, Sam Steider, Tom Timmer, and Ali Tosberg, and again, probably more than a dozen other folks contributing. The reason why I wanted you to see these names and to speak their names is just to help you understand the, 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 the depth and breadth of the focus and the participation that went into this. These are 22 of your fellow parishioners that collectively have a lot of experience and knowledge and wisdom and ideas, and, and they've come together to help build this plan for us. They've been working closely with consultants and contractors, professionals uh, for advice, <clears throat> conducting regular briefings with your vestry over the last several years with approvals uh, for some monies along the way. I, I, would, I would tell you that net-net, their work is really solid. And as you learn more about the details, I, I think you're gonna be impressed. And you can have a lot of confidence that the thinking that went into these proposals was deep and was knowledge-based and was well thought out. So with that, I'd like to introduce David Getz to give you a top-line review on the grounds piece. Thanks, Jeff. Good morning, good afternoon now. Um, so our rector has provided us with a picture of how the world's changing on all four sides of St. Barnabas. In my view, this provides us with a once in a lifetime opportunity to respond to this change. And I'm going to now, hopefully in seven or eight minutes, provide you with an overview of how we intend to respond through beautifying our external grounds as part of welcoming the neighborhood. Before I get to specifics on the project, I wanna give you some context. In 2015, we started working with Five Star Development. Five Star is the owner of the property around us and the developer of the Ritz-Carlton project and everything you see going on. We started talking to them about areas of mutual concern and interest. We negotiated an agreement with Five Star where they agreed to help us with certain things. For example, they agreed to help us remove the low walls on the north and south sides of our property. They agreed to help us re-landscape the perimeter up to our curb line. They agreed to put in a new irrigation system for that new landscape. They also agreed to provide us with a connection for high bandwidth internet and allow us to piggyback on, ba on, on what they're doing for the resort. And if many of you don't know, we don't have great internet service here on campus. We haven't had, and hopefully this will fix that. They also agreed to share their plans and their designs with us along the way and allow us to provide input and comment. So through this dialogue with Five Star and their, uh, their key people, we have developed a very supportive <coughs> and cooperative relationship. And I mention that only because one of the watchwords as we've been thinking about this is maintaining relationships both with the new neighbors, with the town of Paradise Valley, and all stakeholders that are gonna get involved in this. So later in six 2016, as you heard, our rector asked me to form a committee, a project committee, and that included the nine talented people that Jeff introduced, and I do wanna, I forgot to do this at the nine o'clock uh, forum, but I do expressly wanna give my thanks to all those people who've put in a tremendous amount of time. <clears throat> So this committee was formed to get some people to help us think about how we should respond to the changing landscape. Now, our rector asked us to think big, meaning don't limit your vision. Don't think, oh, we could never afford that, or this isn't practical, or, you know. So that's what we did. We, and frankly, as you've heard, we never thought about our, pro our campus from the perspective of those around us, from the new neighbors. We only ever thought about it from Mockingbird Road. 
So this committee of 10 individuals over several years put in probably a little over a thousand man hours of time, meeting after meeting. In mid-2017, we hired a landscape architect, Chris Winters and Associates, to provide professional support and help us develop our thoughts. In 2018, we engaged a general contractor, that's Redden Construction. They helped us build our music center, so they know us, and they actually specialize in working with churches. We, get, we engage them to help us develop our construction cost estimates and our schedule outlook. In 2019, we added to that team a civil engineer, an electrical engineer, a solar expert, a surveyor, a tree specialist, a utility locating firm, and a sign company. All of those individuals and companies have, are working and have worked for us, again, to help develop our plans, to prepare the applications for the town of Paradise Valley, and really get this project to the point where we collectively can make some decisions. So throughout that time, as you've heard, our committee, our senior leadership, and our vestry have been thinking carefully about what do we want to do. We're e at, at this point, we're nearing the end of a permitting process with the town of Paradise Valley that will amend our special use permit. We're having an extended dialogue with the town about our plans and all the related details, and we hope to get approval in a month or so. Um, I will tell you that uh, the town of Paradise Valley is rather uh, picky or choosy about certain aspects. They have some hot buttons, so it's a dialogue. Um, and the timing of their approval is beyond our control. So the timing of us moving forward is related to how long it takes us to get approval to amend our special use permit. After we get the special use permit approved, the changes, we'll turn our, our, our attention to creating construction drawings and specifications and figuring out, assuming we have permission, exactly what we want to do. Now you'll hear a little bit later today from our senior warden about that and the interplay with our financing, the capital campaign. We have a target date to start construction in May of this year. And again, I'll highlight that's dependent on the town of Paradise Valley and actually how long it takes us to get through that. And I will also tell you, frankly, they're taking longer than I had hoped. Um, we are expecting the construction phase of this to take approximately six months. However, we haven't worked the details out of that because honestly we aren't quite sure of the total scope of what we're going to do, but use six months as a good guideline. So now I'd like to turn to the elements of the landscape project and I'm going to talk about eight or nine key elements. You will see around the room some uh, some visuals. I've, I've, these are some of the drawings and things that we've prepared. Uh, mostly these have been done by Chris Winters and Associates over the last couple years. Bear in mind that what you're going to see and what you do see here is all a conceptual landscape plan. So that means we've thought about it carefully, we've got a lot of detail, we've got cost estimates, but it's not final. So we don't have, so, so all of this remain, there is a little uncertainty Therefore, don't hold us to, if you see a tree in this location, it might not actually be there. It might be somewhere else. So it's conceptual. Having said that, we've spent a lot of time defining costs and implications of what do all these details mean. So here's the conceptual landscape plan. This is the main diagram I'm going to use. And again, bear in mind it's conceptual. Um, here's our main entry drive. Um, one of the things we want to do is enhance the view shed down the main entry drive. Um, we're going to make changes, and here's a rendering that will show you an example of what it might look like. So you can see we've got new landscaping. We've, we're going to change the asphalt. That's our intention here with some form of concrete pavers. Uh, we're going to add a median strip. Um, frankly, that's partly for safety because currently, you probably all, all of us are guilty of parking along these areas. It's not very welcoming if you drive down that main entry drive and you've got cars left and right. It's also technically illegal because you're parking in a fire lane. So we're going to put a median strip in, landscape it, and try and create a softer look. We're going to add a nice sign for the first time we hope ever. I'll come back to signage. That's a hot button with the town of Paradise Valley. but. This is an example uh, that our sign company has developed. And we'll add new landscaping everywhere. We intend to keep all the major trees 
and I'll, I'll come back to that too. Um, so we, you've heard this is about our boundaries. We're going to re-landscape all the boundaries, open them up, and make them beautiful from the perspective of people outside our campus, not necessarily inside. It'll still look beautiful inside, but the focus is how do we look from outside? We're going to replace our parking lot on all sides, northeast, south, southeast, south, and the front. Um, the reason we're doing that is our parking lot is at least 30 to 35 years old. We aren't actually sure how old it is. Um, no one is here still who, <laughs> who remembers when we first put it in. You, you saw the picture initially, it was dirt. So, um, and we've gotten to a point where just, you know, we can't keep uh, putting Band-Aids on it. The last time we fixed it, it was $55,000. It looks good right now, but I'll tell you, you're gonna have to keep spending that kind of money every two, three, four, five years, and so we need a new parking lot. That's a major project, it's expensive, and I will forewarn you, it will cause some disruption when we get there, but it's time to do that. Along with that, whoops, sorry. We're going to replace and redesign all of our parking lot lighting, particularly the front lot and the northeast lot. So the lighting we have was put in quite a while ago. It's energy intensive. We're going to replace the fittings and fixtures with LED light, you know, energy efficient uh, uh, light saving devices. We're hoping to raise the level of those standards um, and hopefully have a much better, safer, you know, well-lit well -lit parking lot and some interior lighting. I will tell you, though, that the town of, this is, again, a hot button for the town, and the town has very restrictive uh, rules about it, and so we're going to have a dialogue with them, and I don't know if we'll get everything we've asked for. I, I think we'll get a lot of it, but um, we will end up with a better lit parking lot, particularly up here in the northeast area. Currently, those, if you go out there, if you've been here at night, you can't see out there very easily. They're four foot high little lights, and we're going to seek, we're asking permission for 16 foot high fittings. We'll see if we get that. Um, now, one of the major areas, and uh, our rectors talked about it, but on the south and east areas where the walking path, the, the new five-star path is, this is a major area of focus. So we're going to redesign this, and for example, we're going to close off this part of the, the ring road or perimeter road. This is actually a fire lane and there's a fire hydrant back here. But we're going to change that from asphalt to stabilize granite. So we're intending to put a little barrier of some kind here and here. Now the reason we're doing that is a sea of asphalt is not very attractive. We're going to put in a, a use materials to try and make it more welcoming and connect to what's the, the, the design features around here that Five Star has used. So for example, we have a connection here we'll be looking at how to create additional welcoming opportunities for people to, you know, come and see our labyrinth and invite them into the campus. We'll also have um, a connection here and a beautiful vista if you've ever gone, yeah, you may not have looked, but if you get here, you have a beautiful vista that goes all the way down. So um, the labyrinth area will get new landscaping. Uh, in, I should say enhancements. We're not going to change anything fundamental. But the, land, the labyrinth area, which is part of our contemplative life ministry, was had originally had a three-phase design to it. When we put it in, we put in phase one. So now's the time to add in phases two and three, benches, shade structures. And very, uh, from my point of view, exciting is that we, uh, there was a fountain in, intended in phase two or three, and we're going to do that now. And the fountain has been designed by our own Ron Steggy, and it is magnificent. I, I'm, it's, it's a gorgeous fountain. We want to we want to locate the fountain in this area as close as possible to the walking path, with the expectation that at least you could see it or possibly hear it, and that would again be another feature both for the labyrinth and for those that want to use the labyrinth as well as a feature to invite. Um, this area north of Hutton Hall just out here, which on this drawing is up here, we intend to um, make this area more usable. Currently, if you've ever gone out there, there are steps, three different levels, there are walkways, there are iron, you know, guide rails and things. We're going to take all that out. 
Our intention is to create a floor so when you walk from Hutton Hall out there, it's one level and you don't have to go up and down stairs. We will put in some new landscaping. The goal is to keep that a very quiet and serene and beautiful area. We'll keep the Ramada. We intend to take out the, what I call, ugly oleander hedge, which you probably don't notice anymore, but um, we'll put in an alternative, probably a vegetative screen that's more attractive to still preserve, um, you know, the, the, to, to mark this area off from the parking lot. Um, we want to add shade structures because in the summer, we all know this campus isn't that friendly if you're in direct sunlight. So over the children's playground equipment, we're going to add a very large, probably 40 by 40 or 50 by 50 foot shade structure. Fabric is the intended uh, approach right now. Um, in we're going to, over this, uh, currently we have a little uh, barbecue outdoor cooking area here, and we're intending to put a, sh a shade structure over that so it's usable in the summer. Finally, we have an intention to take the our beautiful covered walkway, which forms around the perimeter of the interior courtyard. We're going to extend it, because right now it ends right here. We will extend that all the way down to the Children's Center. Again, so that in the middle of summer, families and children can walk out and find their kids or take their kids there without dying in the heat. Um, I should also mention, too, I, I, I didn't mean to gloss over it, but Mockingbird Road is going to change. It's going to change because the town is enlarging the road. They're going to take two feet on either side, and they have the right to do that. They have a right of way there. It's a part of their agreement with the resort. They're widening and enhancing that. They'll put in beautiful median structures. So they are going to take out all of our current landscaping, not the mature trees, and redo it. We are intending to supplement that. We aren't quite, we, we do have the plans the town has created for us, but we want to make sure that, again, our front yard is as beautiful as the rest of the campus. So expect major changes out front. Now, I always get asked, when are they going to do it? We don't know yet. Um, they're going to start probably this month sometime, and they're going to do this work. They have a contractor on all three sides of our property, so we're waiting for the details. Again, I'm just forewarning you, there will be some disruption. It's beyond our control. We have lobbied them as much as we can not to do this work between Christmas and Easter. So let's see if that works. <coughs> Finally, we're going to add two large monument signs, and you've seen renderings, right? Uh, either side of our main entry drive. Um, we've never been able to have what we consider good signage. Um, I won't go into the background to that again. This is a very um, regulated area regulated by the town. They have strict guidelines. Um, but we intend to, we're seeking permission now for two large signs, monument signs either side of the main entry drive. We're also asking for permission to put in two directional signs either side of the north and south driveways, which would be a smaller sign that would just indicate, hey, here's a driveway. And finally, um, I'm going to go through, you'll see our beautiful backyard. Here's another view of our beautiful backyard. As our rector said, just go out there sometime and really most of us don't see it, right? Even if I park back there and even I don't always see it. So here's a rendering of what it might look like re-landscaped. And here you'll see another monument type sign and we're hoping the town will allow us to do that. Again, I, I don't know. There are limitations on the number of signs. There are limitations on the size, the lettering, a whole bunch of stuff. But we'd like to put a sign back there so that those walking on the walk, the new, the new green bath, Beltway, will know that, hey, that's St. Barnabas and it's an Episcopal church. Last but not least, we've also asked for permission to put a cross on the back of the sanctuary. Now, that's not technically a sign. I'm told by Smithcraft, who's our sign company, it's a symbol. Um, our rector has actually, he was kind of the genesis for it. Um, I was thinking, actually, we'd put a cross up on the top which would mirror the one we have in the front. But he said he preferred a 25-foot high cross on the back of the sanctuary. So we'll see what the town says about that. Um, I'm not sure we'll get 25 feet, but again, it, this is something I'm hopeful. Uh, so um, let me just finish up by telling you one of the key themes for the landscape project is sustainability. We are proud of our desert landscaping, and we will maintain and promote this through the use of desert trees, desert adapted trees and plantings. 
We also intend to employ passive water harvesting in several areas of our grounds. Now, that the largest application of that is probably, will, it, w assuming that we get it agreed with the town, and I don't see why they won't, the planter medians out in the front parking lot, you know, we all park there and there's a little raised bed with a metal strip around it. We're going to take those levels and depress them. So we're actually going to take dirt out so that, in fact, those planters are below the level of the parking lot. We're going to put concrete curbs around all those. We, we're going to maintain the shape of those. But we'll put, uh, we'll create gaps or spaces between the concrete so that when it rains here, the water will be running into the planter planter medians, irrigating our trees, and saving water on our campus rather than what normally happens is most of it runs off the campus. In addition to that, um, we, we are going to try and reuse old construction materials when and where we can. Um, the most likely ap application would be the parking lot itself because we'll grind up, tear up all that material, and we hope to reuse it as a base for the new parking lot. So. I'm very excited about this project and how transformative and beautiful it's going to be. Um, I'm looking forward to your questions and engaging with you um, as time goes on and our rectors outlined there's going to be a lot of opportunity for that. So um, thank you very much. Good afternoon everyone. My name is Jim Newman and I am one of the co-chairs uh, of the Building Refresh Committee. Um, I'm really, really excited about this uh, uh, project. Uh, we have been working on it for um, a number of months now. Um, we haven't had as much time um, as the uh, Landscape Committee, but we have been able to um, uh, sort of catch up um, with the idea that we would start our process and our progress at the same time that they do. Um, again, I'm really, really excited about this um, project, um, so much so that I joked in the first round this morning that uh, they may have to employ one of those hooks to get me off, um, not thinking that that would actually really happen. Um, so I got really excited and just kept going and kept going and kept going, and poor Reverend Jimmy had to come over and go, come on, we have to go to church. So I did, I got the hook. So I'm going to employ a little bit different tactic uh, this time. Um, so we're um, buckle your seatbelts. We're going to take off. Ready? OK. Um, first of all, I want to thank the committee. Uh, you saw everybody's names up there. Uh, we have uh, worked very hard, um, not only together, but also with Redden Construction um, and Archicon, who is uh, our architect and um, interiors firm. Uh, we've also worked closely with Arizona Restaurant Supply uh, on the kitchen um, refresh that uh, I'll be showing you in a little bit of time. Um, there was a lot that we had to get through. Uh, uh, we are looking at refreshing Sean's Place, the Learning Center, the Children's Center, and Hutton Hall. And so, um, as you can imagine, some of those buildings have, have uh, been around. Um, as Reverend Jimmy said, uh, the Children's Center was built shortly after the uh, sanctuary was so it's been it's been here a little while um, I'm gonna start with the newest building first which would be Sean's place um, what I'm, I'm gonna go through just some uh, very um, quick uh, items for each one of the three buildings again you know there will be opportunities for uh, a little bit deeper dive into what we're planning to do um, but just this is gonna be a quick overview um, of the buildings uh, in Sean's place specifically, we're looking at uh, um, uh, changing out the carpets, changing out the flooring. The flooring, we're going to pull the carpet up um, from all of these um, uh, high traffic areas. And uh, we're looking at putting down um, you, uh, either an epoxy floor or maybe a stained concrete that is easy to um, clean. Uh, the stained concrete will have uh, a texture to it so that it won't be slippery. So that's one of the things we're looking at um, in all the buildings as well. Um, the bathrooms all need to be rehabbed. Um, so we're looking at these obviously here in Sean's Place as well. Um, Sean's Place being the newest of the three buildings um, has, a little, has a little bit less to be done, but um, I would just recommend that when you go in there, don't look too closely at the floor or at the ceiling. Or um, So we're working on that. 
Okay, the Learning Center. Um, the Learning Center uh, propo um, gave us a little bit of a challenge because right now um, it is used for um, Family Promise and there are showers here and here. We wanted to move the showers um, so that they would have more privacy. Um, additionally, we are turning them into ADA compliant showers. So they will be roll in instead of step in. Um, as well as everything else in the bathroom will also be ADA compliant as well. Again, the same thing with the flooring and with the carpet. Around the corner here, there's a palette that shows you what we're looking at in terms of the carpet and the flooring. Um, so I encourage you to take a look at that. Um, that goes for all the buildings. The majority of the buildings um, will all be the same uh, with the exception of uh, the Children's Center. Um, we're using a little bit different carpet there to correspond with the, color, uh, the colored rooms um, that are in that building. So. Uh, in the Children's Center and in the Learning Center, um, the windows will need to be replaced. Um, specifically in the Children's Center, those windows have been in since the building was built, so they are all single-paned. Um, some of them are also a little loose. I would not recommend pushing on them or leaning on them. Um, sometimes you'll, you may hear them rattle sometimes if the door closes, um, so they definitely need to be replaced as well as the Learning Center. Again, Sh um, Sean's place, um, that's a little bit uh, different story in terms of the fact that it's a newer building. So, um, how am I doing on time? Okay. All right. So, to the Children's Center, um, there's a lot going on here that has to be um, dealt with, um, especially in terms of the bathrooms. Um, uh, at this point, um, the bathrooms are barely usable. Um, they've been well loved. They've been around for a while. Um, they've uh, been well used. Um, so it's time, it's time to do a little refresh on them. Specifically, um, new uh, sinks, um, new countertops, um, new faucets. They will be motion censored. So uh, the kids won't have to worry about turning on and off and you know, you won't walk by and see a faucet running because someone forgot to turn it off. Um, we're actually gonna put a hot water heater in there. So there's actually hot water for people to use to wash their hands. Um, which uh, will go in one of these, in, probably in this janitorial room right there. Again, with the flooring, this is gonna be the same type of flooring in the major areas here. Um, we are keeping the colors, that was one of the requests, so that the, there's continuity in terms of, hey, I go to the orange room, I go to the red room. Um, the carpet is going to be corresponding with the color, and those swatches are over here as well if you wanna take a look. Um, Again, with um, the bathrooms and all of the bathroom refreshes, it's going to be everything from top to toe. It's going to be um, new surrounds, toilets, sinks, um, all the bathroom accessories. Um, we're going to be using a stamped um, material that goes on the wall that does not have any grout. As we know, grout tends to hold on to things. Um, we're getting rid of all the grout. Uh, again, this is going to be probably either an epoxied or um, a stained floor that's going to be easy to clean. Um, and as I said before, have a texture to it. So uh, back here now to Hutton Hall. Um, this may be a little difficult for you to see. I have the plans over there if somebody you know, at some point wants to ask me some questions about it. Um, this is going to be a relatively um, uh, major overhaul because what we're planning to do, uh, because we need space to make the bathrooms ADA compliant, what we're planning to do is we're planning to move one of the bathrooms that's here over to the other side. Not only for privacy reasons, but then also, again, so that we have space to make them ADA compliant. Um, with the space that we gain from moving the bathrooms, it is our hope that we will be able to put in a walk-in cooler um, that will act as, uh, obviously, refrigeration. We can store flowers in, we can store food in, um, and that is what you see here over on this rendering. Um, this whole area, the entire kitchen, uh, is going to be uh, demolished and redone. Uh, it has been, from what I understand, 15 years since we've done that, and um, thousands and thousands and thousands of meals have been prepped in there. Um, if any of you have um, prepped in there, you know that sometimes it can be difficult. So we're gonna do some pretty hefty changes. I'm just gonna name a couple of them for you. Um, we're gonna move the cooking 
um, bay here that houses all of the um, stoves and the ovens and everything like that, we're going to move that back a number of feet to give more space here for prep. This, if you go into the kitchen now, you'll see that this is a two-tiered a two -tiered, uh, um, countertop. We are going to make it all one level um, and make it executive height and it'll be stainless steel. Underneath which will be cabinets. However, the cabinets will open to the outside and it will have doors that open and inside will have rolling carts that will house plates, cups, glasses, so that they're easy to roll out and roll into the main hall to set up for events. Um, cabinetry, more storage. Currently, this is the pantry. Uh, it proposes a little bit of a safety hazard. I won't get into that, but it does propose a little bit of a safety hazard. Um, because you need, um, without getting too far into the weeds, you need at least four feet from an electrical panel in the event that something happens for you to step back. We do not have that currently. So we have moved the pantry here, and it'll be a very tall um, with louvered um, shelving, um, and that will leave this open and leave it as is. Um, two freezers here outside. And this is um, what that looks like. Uh, here's the door to the cooler, and then it'll have the two freezers on the outside. Uh, new ovens, new stoves. That will be electric um, ignition, so we will no longer smell gas when we walk in because of the pilot lights. Um, and then warmers. Uh, and, and, and this is a, the specification for that uh, cabinet I was talking about with the rollouts. Um, so it's going to be a it's going to be a project, but it is going to make it more safe, user friendly. It's going to make it uh, the traffic patterns easier. When you're doing things like Broadway Bash, there's a lot of people to feed, a lot of people in and out of that kitchen, and sometimes it can be a safety hazard. And so what we've tried to do, along with Arizona Restaurant Supply, and Archicon, is what we've tried to um, make it uh, easier, more accessible, um, and again, a safer environment. Um, so, how's that? Good job. Excellent. So again, I'm really, really excited, and um, I hope you are too. And um, again, I want to thank my committee and um, all of those uh, who helped um, with this process. It, is, it has been fun, and I look forward to uh, more time with each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Okay, you're ready for the money slide? <laughs> this project we envision for $6.8 million. Let that sink in. And that uh, I will point out that that includes uh, cost of financing uh, to, for bridge financing. It's a big number, and we'll talk about that. It's uh, broken down into five key areas that are going to be discussed in more detail in the magazine that you're going to receive. Creating a profound welcome, extending our welcome, nurturing the faith, warming the hearth, and beautifying our grounds. Our job at this point is to really learn and understand this, right? We got opportunities through tours, gatherings in homes, gatherings here at the church, information counters, talking with members of the committee. Let's take the opportunity to learn more about the details so that you can understand it. David talked earlier that he was asked to dream big. Okay? We, we didn't say to these committees, give us some improvement. We didn't say, give us an incrementally better right? We said, dream big. Show us what transformative looks like for us. Show us what it's going to take to prepare this church for the next generation, for the folks that are going to come after us, for our children. Show us what that plan looks like. And that's what we've done. The result is a beautiful and inspiring plan. And I think we can do this. Now, the elephant in the room, what if we don't raise all that money, Jeff? Well, you know, we'll see what happens. 
But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, uh, we're going to do what we have support for. And you know who's going to decide what that is? It's us. We're going to decide what we're going to do. And if we don't have the full amount, then your vestry, your leadership will make some choices and prioritize and, and do that. But our goal is to do the whole enchilada, guys. That's what we want to find a way to do. And the person that's going to lead us there is our campaign chair, Don Bivens. Don, come on up and tell them how they can participate. Well, it's easy to, to participate. <laughs> you know that drill. Um, I'm sitting here thinking that this is just an unbelievable opportunity that this, gar this path is going by us and that we get a chance to refresh our front. I mean, it's not just a uh, like the next chapter in this parish. It's the second volume. I mean, the first one's going to be put aside, and we're going to open a new one. And for me, I'm very happy to be part of that history uh, with you to 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 make this happen. There's really no cooler time to have been part of this part of this parish. Um, some people will will ask, well, didn't we just do a, uh, a a pledge campaign? The answer is yes. But think of our choices. We have three things we could do before the pledge campaign, during the pledge campaign, or after the pledge campaign. <laughs> and so we voted for after. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and this is the time to, to, get, to get it done. So we're going to have new neighbors. Um, and uh, they're going to have a first impression. Uh, I learned something yesterday that uh, I didn't know. And that is, of the 56 new families and, and members that we got last year, do you know how, how many of them uh, came through the website as their first impression? Over half over half because they liked what they saw and uh, their w our website is better than other church websites and th that's why they came. The other thing though that people get is the first impression by looking at us and uh, I encourage you to, if you haven't done it yet take a hundred yards down that path don't look back turn around and tell me what you see. It could be an institution for the insane. <laughs> 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 there are no windows. <laughs> what people keep those people in? <laughs> um, it's white slump. Uh, you, you, if you if you get at just the right angle, you see this little teeny tiny cross <laughs> on the top, uh, but you don't know it's a church. And what we need to do is to fix that, so that as people walk up, it's inviting. You see that fountain. You hear it. The path goes right across into our backyard. Invite you into the grounds. If you're over here, you look down and you go, whoa. That's like 200 yards of church. Um, and we have signage. Get our website up there, stbarnabas.org. They're going to have their phone. They're going to check it out. And like the others who come, they're going to like the website too. So it, I, I liken it to uh, like my own house. Uh, when we have guests coming over, we don't really want you to see how we live. Uh, <laughs> we we, we want to impress you that all the pillows are in the right place, uh, the, uh, the kitchen is clean. That's what we have to do here too. It's time to spiff it up a bit because we're going to have we're going to have guests. Um, it, our church home is full of sacred spaces, but um, probably each of us in this room have a different place that we prioritize. Uh, if you are a young family, you may prioritize the children's center because you want a safe, loving, clean hot water oriented kind of uh, kind of place. Uh, but I bet you a lot of people in this room haven't been to the Children's Center in a while. Go over and take a look. Uh, it, it, it was literally built in the last century uh, and, and, and it feels that way. Um, other people look at the, the church and they think about the, the teens, weddings, baptisms, worship, music, our contemplative life, the kitchen, are many ministries out here, uh, and each of us are going to have a different priority on that. And our hope is that th th with the sweep of this project, that your space gets some prioritization. And we're going to put a menu together of things that need to be done, from a bucket of paint to uh, a fountain to the different things. And we're not so much looking for you to say, I'll do this one, as we're thinking, I'd be willing to contribute that amount, because that would enhance my sacred space, the one that's, that's, that's good to me. So if, if you're like me, uh, and I think most of the people in this room, when you got here, most of this stuff was already built. Um, and it wasn't built by me.
wasn't built by most of us in this room. It was built by people who are not here anymore, and a lot of them are in that memorial garden. Uh, and they built it uh, knowing you'd come. And they wanted the, uh, the, the, the message to be, as Jim says, all are welcome, come and see. And that, that's the whole goal here. Uh, we also have this, uh, this saying at St. Barnabas of, uh, if it is to be, it's up to me, right? So I want to add that for this camp capital campaign. If it is to be, it's up to me. <laughs> but if not now, when? You know, if not where, here. Uh, it's, it's our time to, to open that, that new volume. So uh, when you get this pledge card in the mail, uh, it's going to talk about $6.8 million. Uh, but I have some good news. We've already raised 2.7. Uh, and that's by uh, going around to some people who are a little closer to all that's happening. They get excited. They want to contribute. Jim has done most of all of that himself. I know there are significant lead donors in this room. Uh, you know who you are. I know who some of you are. Uh, and uh, we need your help. Uh, but everybody needs to participate. And whether it's a couple of buckets of paint or it is a significant contribution, um, we need it. Uh, I think we can exceed $6.8 million. And if we do, I got my eye on the office. <laughs> <laughs> because what I've been thinking about is if somebody sees us and they come in, they're going to say, where's the office? And when they get to the office, they're going to say, do you have hot water? <laughs> I mean, it's <laughs> it, 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 it is literally from the last century as, as well. So when you get that pledge card, don't fill it out. Uh, because I guarantee you, if you will take the chance to educate yourself, take that walk, take one of the tours, or just give it yourself, walk around, and instead of looking sideways, look down, look up, look at the, the stains along the wall. We don't really have them here, but you see plenty over in this room where the mon monsoons blow the dust in. Uh, it, it, it needs, it's time to, to, time to fix it up. But educate yourself and then reflect on what you think you can do. And don't think in terms of what you can do in one check. We're going to spread this out over five years. And a lot of the 2.7 we've raised is because people thought, well, I could do that for five years. And uh, if you can do it for five years, uh, you, you can probably do more than you think. And there's tax advantages to this. Uh, and if you had any money in the stock market of late, you probably have appreciated stock. Uh, you can gift that, and you don't pay taxes on the, the appreciation. Uh, so there's lots of ways here that, that it's just the right time and the right place for us for us to do this. So anyway, this this unbelievable opportunity. I think if you take it personally, it is an uh, opportunity to refresh your own relationship with our campus, uh, refresh your relationship with your own sacred space, uh, and then honor the people sitting next to you because their sacred space will not be the same. Uh, and understand that they're going to think the kitchen is more important than you do, or that the the Children's Center is more important than you do. Um, but we're all in this together, and we're marching forward together. So I think if we do that, we're going to have this opportunity. If it is to be, it's up to me and to you. It's our turn to do it for the next generation. Let's do this. We can get it done. <laughs>